Hello everyone. This video is the English version of the lesson taught by Germán Lombo. Today, we'll be giving an overview of the heart. We will study the fundamental characteristics of this marvelous organ in a simple, concise and original way. So, let's get going. We will start with an overview. The heart is one of the most spectacular organs we can study. It works as a contractible pump structured around a group of muscle cells, known as cardiomyocytes. In this way, the heart functions as the central element of the circulatory system, propelling blood through the blood vessels, whether they be arteries or veins, and thus promoting the distribution and mobilization of blood all around the body. The heart can be classically divided into two halves, the right half or right heart, and the left half, or left heart. The right heart receives the poorly oxygenated blood, which returns from the different organs or tissues, and, in turn, sends it to the lungs for the respective gas exchange. And the left heart is in charge of receiving the oxygenated blood coming from the lungs, and distributing this oxygen-rich blood to the different organs and tissues. So, where is the heart located? The heart is set in the thoracic cavity, or chest cavity, in a place known as the mediastinum. This is a space located between the two pulmonary cavities, the right pulmonary cavity and the left pulmonary cavity. We should mention that the mediastinum has divisions and that our main organ, the heart, is located specifically in the middle mediastinum. OK, let's go over the divisions of the mediastinum so that we can fully understand. The mediastinum is basically divided into two parts, the superior and inferior mediastinum, and the division between the two is established from the transverse plane of the thorax. The inferior mediastinum is, in turn, divided into anterior, middle and posterior. The heart is located in the middle mediastinum, which in this case is shown in orange. Now that we know its central location in the thoracic cavity, we should add that the heart can project itself externally in four points, which mark the precordial area of the heart, superior right, inferior right, superior left, and inferior left. It should be noted that these points may vary depending on the constitution of the person, and that some sources differ a little on the exact location of each point. But, in general, we can establish that. The superior right point is on the upper border of the third costal cartilage, one centimeter from the sternal border. The inferior right point is on the sternal border with the fifth and sixth right intercostal space. The inferior left point is on the fourth or fifth left intercostal space, eight centimeters from the midline. The superior left point is in the second left intercostal space, two centimeters from the sternal border. The pericardium and the layers of the heart. Now, a fundamental aspect that we must understand is that the heart is not naked in the thoracic cavity. Rather, it is covered by a fibrous membrane known as the pericardium. If we look closely, taking a cut at the level of the pericardium and zooming in, we can see that the pericardium is divided into layers and that these layers are related to the layers that form the walls of the heart. So, to show this in a simple and fun way, let's use Lego to represent the layers of the pericardium and the heart, from the most superficial to the deepest, starting with the pericardium. First, we have the fibrous pericardium, the outermost layer of the pericardium. Then we have the serous pericardium that is divided into two layers. There is the parietal layer of the serous pericardium. Note how it is attached to the inner side of the fibrous pericardium. And we also have the visceral layer of the serous pericardium. What's more, we should note that between the parietal layer and the visceral layer of the serous pericardium, we place a white piece of Lego. This layer represents a virtual cavity known as the pericardial cavity. But what does a virtual space mean? It means that, in normal conditions, 
it does not exist, since the two layers of the serous pericardium are united, and there is only a small amount of pericardial fluid between them. However, in a pathological situation, blood or pus can accumulate between the two layers of the serous pericardium, causing these to separate and form a real cavity. And, speaking of illnesses related to the pericardium, we should mention that pericarditis is an inflammation of the pericardium. This can cause it to thicken, or for the surface of its layers to become rough. Thus, when they rub together, they produce a very particular sound, on auscultation, which is described as a pericardial rub. Now that we've described the layers of the pericardium, let's look at the layers of the heart. We have the epicardium, the myocardium, and the endocardium. The epicardium is the same as the visceral layer of the serous pericardium. That's to say that here, the heart shares a layer with the pericardium. Then, the myocardium is the thick, contractile muscular wall of the heart. And finally, the endocardium a thin layer that lines the interior of the chambers of the heart. Now that we know the layers that make up the walls of the heart and the importance of their relationship with the pericardium, we can observe how our heart is related to the different structures of the thoracic cavity. Laterally, it is related to the lungs. Inferiorly, it is related to the diaphragm, resting on the oval centre of the diaphragm. Superiorly, it is related to the great vessels, posteriorly with the oesophagus, and anteriorly with the sternum and the thymus, bearing in mind that this later involutes in adulthood. Chambers of the Heart Now, when we explore the general structure of the heart, we must remember that the heart is divided into two, the right heart and the left heart, as we mentioned at the start. The right heart is responsible for receiving poorly oxygenated blood from the organs and tissues and sending it to the lungs. Whereas the left heart is responsible for receiving oxygenated blood from the lungs and sending it to the organs and tissues. Having understood this, we can now go on to say that the right heart is formed of two chambers, the right atrium and the right ventricle and the left heart of another two chambers, the left atrium and the left ventricle. Therefore, the heart as a whole is formed of four chambers. The atria are blood-receiving chambers, and the ventricles are chambers which push the blood out of the heart. In this way, the right atrium receives the poorly oxygenated blood from the organs and tissues, and the right ventricle sends the poorly oxygenated blood to the lungs, for the gas exchange, known as hematosis, to occur. On the other hand, the left atrium receives the oxygen-rich blood, which flows from the lungs, and the left ventricle is responsible for sending this blood to the different organs and tissues. It is also important to mention that there are divisions between the different chambers, and that these partition walls are called septa. The septum which separates the atria is known as the interatrial septum, and the septum that separates the ventricles is known as the interventricular septum. It should be noted that there are pathologies related to inadequate communication between the cavities. Due to structural defects of the septa, such as an incomplete wall, which permits interatrial or interventricular communication. So, now that we know about the existence of the four chambers of the heart, we can start to add more details, so that the pieces of our heart start to fit together like a puzzle. Observe how each chamber receives or sends blood through veins or arteries that function as channels of communication and transfer. In this last illustration, we can see that the right atrium is connected to the superior and inferior vena cava, and the right ventricle with the pulmonary trunk that divides into the two pulmonary arteries. In the case of the left atrium, this is connected to the four pulmonary veins and the left ventricle with the aorta. Valves of the heart. So, now our heart structure is a little more complete. But look, in white we highlight some details which are found between the chambers. 
and between the vessels and the chambers. These elements represent the valves of the heart. The valves work by controlling the flow of blood and prevent, for example, blood returning to the cavity it originated from, thus ensuring a unidirectional flow of blood. Now, having reached this point, we will finish today's lesson and we can continue in the next video, Anatomy of the Heart, Part 2. And remember, if you liked the class, don't forget to share it with your friends, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel so that we can continue learning together in the future. See you later.